Hernandez. Great ace from Alexis Mateo. Otten throws it down. What a play by Amanda Otten. Karashi is rejected by Alexis Mateo. Blocked by Andrews and Vaswavchik. Hubby into the crowd. Set goes to BG. And the Falcons, the Cardiac Birds, have done it. Bowling Green takes it in three sets. Bring out the brooms, because that's a sweep for the Falcons. Welcome back to Millette Arena here in wonderful Oxford, Ohio. We're just about 22 hours removed from Bowling Green State University Falcons pulling out what really became a gritty win against the Miami Red Hawks in four sets yesterday. I'm Chaz McNeil, joined by Andrew Smith, and yesterday, it really seemed like the Falcons were in the driver's seat. They put everything together in the first two sets, winning set number one, 15 to 25, second set, 16 to 25, and then they go into that third set, take a pretty dominant lead, then we start seeing some unfamiliar faces for Bowling Green, some faces that I don't see as much action. We saw a Bell Laube, we saw a Maria Tabak, Paige Parlanti, a, a couple new faces, and the Red Hawks didn't really seem that happy about that. They stormed back, took the third set, forcing a fourth, where Bowling Green had to really come together and figure everything out. They had to kind of reestablish themselves from the first two sets. That third set really was uncharacteristic of what we've seen, but Andrew, it's really shaping up after yesterday that we have a little bit of a battle on our hands here today. Yeah, you know, these Red Hawks, I mean, they only got one win in the max season, but that doesn't mean they're not here to fight. That doesn't mean they're not here to come and play. They want to win games. And facing a team like Bowling Green that's sitting at the top of the MAC is uh, an added incentive, you know, taking down one of the one of the giants in the MAC right now. So I think they came out in that third set kind of feeling disrespected by Bowling Green, putting, putting in uh, some unfamiliar faces, like you said, Chaz, and they... They came storming back, and I think they made that fourth set, even with the starters for Bowling Green in, they made that fourth, fourth set very tough for BG. So yeah, these, these Red Hawks are here to play, and, and the Falcons are gonna have to realize that just because they're facing worse teams in the back right now doesn't mean they can take any days off, doesn't mean they can take any points off. And this is, uh, you kind of mentioned it, this is a Miami team that has a history with Bowling Green. They actually lead the series 51-43 to 43 all time. Bowling Green got that 43rd win yesterday. But as of recent, at least, Bowling Green have won 11 straight against the Red Hawks. And I mean, I don't know about you, but for head coach of the Red Hawks, Dan Gwitt, that feels like bulletin board material. Trying to get a win for the first time since 2019, nearly half a decade ago. And we saw Miami gave them everything we got. But with that said, Let's go through a couple of the intangibles for both of these teams. What do they need to do? Start, let's start off first with the Falcons. Bowling Green have really done a good job as of late spreading their offense around. They, we, we know that towards the beginning portion of the year, they functioned primarily through their engine of Lauren Hovey. Mia Tyler was not really getting as much production as you'd like to see, but yesterday, great job by the Falcons. When they needed Hovey, obviously they went to her. But Hovey, 18 kills. Mia Tyler had 11. Jordan Newblatt has been seeing a lot more time. She's got nine. The outside hitter position has been really stepping up as of late and really started to make itself known. And then you go to the defensive side, a lot of noise being made there too. Alexis Matil had eight blocks. Lauren Hovey had five blocks. And Jessica Andrews, as always, up there in block numbers with five as well. Yeah, you know, the Falcons have been spreading spreading the ball very, very well, like you said, and I think that's an attribute to uh, Amanda Otten's play right now. At the beginning of the year, she kind of was very reliant on uh, Lauren Hovey. I think it maybe was a lack of confidence, uh, but as the year's gone on, she's, she's trusted her hitters more. She's trusted herself more and uh, spread the ball out a lot. I really like how she's been factoring in the middles more. Alexis Matil and Jessica Andrews are getting a lot more touches on slides and three balls. And like you said, with the blocking, the entire team can block. And when that gets going, they, they win games flat out. And so what BG needs to do today is they need to get into a groove with their blocking. 
and shut down this Miami attack, which is very doable for the Falcons. We've seen them shut down the best offenses in the MAC this season. And they also, on the offensive side of things, need to continue to spread the ball out. I want to see Mia Tyler get a ton of touches today. I think she could be the player of the day. And they need to make sure that the middles get touches as well. The slide's going to come into play. The three ball's going to come into play. They need to keep this Miami defense guessing. And that's really the most appealing part, you could say, for this team. If you're Coach Daniela Tomic, something you're really excited about, this team gets production no matter who is on the court. Such a deep roster, we know that, but of their starters, you look, Lauren Hovey, third on the team in digs yesterday. She was she she was first in kills, first in aces, and second in blocks. You look at Amanda Otten, she had 45 assists, she led the team obviously as the setter, but then she had her two aces tied for the best. They can do, they do such a good job of just getting production no matter where it's coming from. If you need Lauren Hovey to get a couple clutch digs when you need it, she'll be there. You, we mentioned as a back row player, Alexis Matilla as a middle blocker, had times has had to get things done, has had to get down, get parallel with the court and dig up a couple tough balls. And at the end of the day, that's what's been separating the Falcons. They were on before yesterday's tough battle with the Red Hawks. The Falcons were on a four game sweeping streak. They swept Buffalo, they swept Akron, then they swept, a, now admittedly, a winless in the MAC Kent State team back to back at home. They were defending their home court after suffering back to back losses two weeks prior. And I, I think that's really something interesting we need to focus in on. That two game, I'm not gonna call it a series, but that two game back to back matchup of Eastern and Central Michigan, where the Falcons suffered their first MAC losses of the year in five sets each really showed them, and I think the uh, coaching staff would admit this as well, they got to win earlier. They really have to establish themselves sooner. They have to make things kind of click earlier. They can't, we saw there was a little confusion out of Amanda Otten at times. We mentioned it off air, of how she was, she wasn't really willing to make the immediate plays as quickly to sort of the recognition. That's almost completely gone. She's been lights out for the month of October and even into November. And the Falcons, and they've shown it, they won, they've won the first set of the past five straight games. And I wouldn't be surprised if they kept going. It looked like they were gonna sweep yesterday, but like we said, there's history with Miami. And I, I believe at the end of the day, it was the Falcons experience, kind of being there before that really got them over that hump. Yeah, I will say the Falcons uh, at the beginning of the season did not have that edge on the net. Uh, and what I mean by that is they're not jumping to get those free balls. They're not uh, making sure to, to uh, cover their hitters always. Uh, and it seems like Eastern and Central Michigan just took advantage of that with just better play closer to the net with the front court. And I think you're right. The, the front court for the Falcons has gotten more confidence as the years as the year has gone on, especially Amanda Otten. She's jumping for free balls. She's making sure to block. She's playing very, very well. With that said, we're going to take a quick break for the national anthem. We'll be back with starting lineups. Here's a fun fact for you. The average chameleon can point their eyes in two different directions. On the other hand, the average human can't. So unless you're a chameleon, there's absolutely no way you can focus on texting and driving at the same time. So don't do it, unless you're a chameleon. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Did you know that people born from 1945 to 1965 have the highest rates of hepatitis C, but most don't know they're infected? People can live for decades without symptoms, but over time, Hepatitis C can cause serious health problems, including liver damage and even liver cancer. If you were born from 1945 to 1965, the CDC recommends that you get a blood test for hepatitis C. So talk to your doctor about getting tested. It could save your life. A message from the CDC. 
The Ohio State Highway Patrol is looking for motivated, service-minded individuals for the position of state trooper. The choice to become a trooper is a choice that positively affects the lives of countless people on a daily basis. Our minimum requirements are as follows. You must be 20 to 34 years of age, possess a high school diploma or GED, be a United States citizen, and have a valid driver's license. We will also pay you during your training. For information, visit our website at statepatrol.ohio.gov. It's simple. It's your tomorrow, and it starts here. Hey, I'm Tyler Cavlitz, and you are listening to 88.1 FM WBGU Bowling Green, home of the Falcon Media Sports Network. Welcome back here to Millette Hall here in Oxford, Ohio. I'm Chaz McNeil, joined by Andrew Smith, and we are just seconds away. We're getting the starting lineups right now, but we are just a click away from this really big matchup against a Miami team that stood strong against the Falcons yesterday. If you want to catch the recap, Artie Abrego will have that on BGFalconMedia.com about an hour to two hours after this game wraps up. But with that said, we have starting lineups out. And uh, let's start off with Bowling Green. Let's start off with the road team. We usually do it a different way, but we're switching up this time. Starting off with the Falcons. Number one, Sydney Hernandez. It's, spoiler alert, folks, it's the exact same starting lineup we've seen throughout a lot of Mac play. Number one, Sydney Hernandez, defensive specialist, the freshman from Bloomington. Number seven, the middle blocker, junior, 6'4", from Gulf, Ontario, Jessica Andrews. Number nine, Mia Tyler, the 6'1", senior outside hitter from Louisville, Kentucky. Number 11, Amanda Otten, the 6'3", sophomore setter from Batavia, Illinois. Number 12, the libero, Lindsay LaPinta, the 5'5", grad student. Number 14 from Waterloo, Ontario, the six-foot opposite junior, Lauren Hovey. And wrapping all this up, it's Alexis Matil, the 6'1", fifth-year middle blocker, number 16. And with that said, Andrew, we are just about a second away from this matchup. We're about to get Miami's starting lineup. But before we do, who do you think will be the standout player for the Red Hawks to get the job done against the Tigers? I'm, I'm going to look to uh, Reagan Lance to have a big game. Uh, just a sophomore, but she's been doing big things for the Red Hawks this season. One of the leader, one of their leaders in kills, and they look to her a lot on the outside. Uh, side of the court to, to get kills when they need them most. And, you know, really interesting, Lance immediately, as you said that, trotted out onto the court for the Red Hawks as starting lineups are being broken down. And she, she didn't start yesterday, but actually Carter Leonard, who was on the call with me yesterday, had the exact same reasoning. He took Reagan Lance, too, as his player of the game. That didn't end up going as well as planned, but at the end of the day, she did get a good amount of time, and she's starting today. So it'll be interesting to see how things really work out for the Red Hawks. They have to go up against the number one in the Mac in blocks, the Bowling Green Falcons. The block for Bowling Green has been really stout. I mean, you've got so much size. You've got Amanda Otten. You've got Alexis Matil, Jessica Andrews. The hitting has been spread around more. I mean, there's so much we can say and so little time, it feels like. And just ever since those losses to the directional Michigan, they've really turned things up an entirely new notch. So with and that said, Andrew. And we're going to get right into the starting lineup for Miami that just tried out into the court. Uh, number one, Reagan Lance, uh, who I just talked about a little bit. Uh, outside hitter, 6'1", sophomore from Holland, Michigan. We have number three, Anna McClure, uh, libero de slash defensive specialist. I believe she is the libero for the day for the Red Hawks. 5'8", red shirt sophomore from Champaign, Illinois. Next up, we have Chelsea Williams, another great hitter on the outside for the Red Hawks. 5'11", sophomore, coming out of Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. Next up, Gentry Warwick, number 11. Uh, a middle blocker, 6'1", junior from Linton, Indiana. Next up, we have number 14, Caroline Sarmack, an outside hitter, 5'11", senior from Louisville, Kentucky. Gracie Norris, number 17, the setter for the Red Hawks, 5'10", senior from Anderson, South Carolina. And number 21, Anna Vetter, opposite hitter, 5'11", freshman from Kenilworth, Illinois. Falcons rocking with the exact same lineup, but that one main change happened to the Miami Red Hawks. They substituted, and different from last night's starting lineup, 
Reagan Lance is actually in for Ellie Hansen, who started last night. Try, maybe trying to get a little bit more out of that outside hitter position. The Red Hawks really struggled early in the game last night just to get things going. We saw a pretty big day out of Chelsea Williams, sophomore outside hitter. And Caroline Cermak also had a pretty decent game, but just not enough. You gotta, you gotta get more production out of your hitters. Yeah, you know, the Red Hawks very much so lean on their outside hitters. They they don't get a lot of attacks coming in from the, the middle and the opposite side hitters. Uh, I think it's because they end up out of system a lot. This team is great on serve receive and service aces, one of the top teams in the MAC in that regard. But when it comes to receiving hits, they're ninth place in the MAC in digs per set. So it calls into question, what can they do to change it up to make sure that their middle's getting some attention, to make sure that their opposite hitter's getting some attention? I mean, you're 100% right. I mean, there's, there's a lot of interesting things that they're gonna have to change. It's just, they, they came up short yesterday, mm. and that's really the end of it. As the serve from Otten to open up play is just a bit outside. Falcon, Falcon faithful were pointing at the line saying it was in, but looked just a bit out from where we are situated. And so we'll get our first switch of the day. I wanted to get to this during starting lineups. Anna McClure checking out for Ava, Ava Francis. Falcons, or the Red Hawks, excuse me, going for two separate liberos as that one will be fielded. The attack by Alexis Matil will fall through and it will go, so we're tied at one apiece here early. And a very clean, quick attack from the Falcons. I said they got to get the middles involved immediately. They do on a three ball to Alexis Matil. On the serve, it will be Avery Anders. This ball is up and floated. It will be dug out low by McClure on the setup. The attack by Vetter will be fielded by Otten. Bump set to Edita Vatswavchik. That'll be saved again. Red Hawks on the setup. It goes over off the hands. Did Anders touch it on the outside ball? Yes, they did. So it'll be two to one. Vatswavchik getting an early look here. We saw the Falcons have been going with Jordan Newblatt as of recently, but a lot of people forget that Eddie is a very strong hitter. This serve by Vetter will be picked up by Anders. Set up Otten over to Vatswavchik. That one will go off of McClure. Just at the top, it falls on the Red Hawks' side. Kept alive by Cermak on the attack is Williams. Kept alive by Anders, but that goes way outside. And Miami already up to a, a three to one lead up to when in the first two sets, they did not lead at all last night. Serve here will be Vetter for the second straight time. This serve fielded by Anders. Otten to Hovey, blocked at the top by the combination of Williams. That will go again for Miami, now four to one. And that's a great block by this Miami team. They're actually fourth in the MAC in blocking per set. So they are a strong blocking team and Lauren Hovey just hit right into it that time. Vetter, three in a row. This one's up, it's low, fielded by Anders. Set up Otten to Vatswavchik, off the hands. Falcons will break the drought. And I think Eddie might be the best player on the Falcons at tooling the block, besides maybe Lauren Hovey. Just gets it right off the top of the hands perfectly and sends it careening over all of the Red Hawk defenders. You speak about tool, but also power. I'd say both the combination of Hovey and Vatswavchik are just lethal. As the serve by Matil will be picked up by McClure. Set up Norris on the attack. That one spins around the net and falls on the Falcons' side. That one bounced off of Andrews and Vatswavchik and went out of bounds. So Falcons down two to five here, down three early against the Red Hawks. And we'll check Ellie Hansen, who will have the serve. The junior from Ladero Ranch, California, sends this one over. Picked up by Anders. Otten to Andrews, blocked at the top. Will it be saved by Lapinta? No, it won't. Four now is the lead, six to two. And the Red Hawks right now, their blocking looks very, very strong. It's a shorter team, but they all have strong hops, and they're just getting up there and meeting the BG attackers at the peak. Two in a row for Hansen, picked up by Lapinta, over to Vatswavchik, off the block. Otten, bump set Lapinta to Hovey, off the hands, and on 
out of bounds. So that will go towards Bowling Green, six to three. And BG, like, I, like we talked about uh, in the pregame, their out of system uh, attacks have gotten so much better as the season has gone on. You saw it right there. Service, Maestro behind the stripe. Lauren Hovey sends this one over. It will be picked up by McClure. Up goes Gracie Norris. And that will be blocked at the top by the combination of Otten and Andrews. So you mentioned getting the blockers involved. Well, look at that. As not even a blocker got a hand on that, that was Otten who got a majority of that block. And you know, that is what this BG team is so good at. That's my favorite thing about them is they are the best blocking team in the MAC. On the serve, Hovey second in a row. Picked up there by Hanson. Set up Norris. It's Cermak to Lopinta. Kept alive. Otten sets to Vatsuavchik, and she just laces that one in. Falcons now drop into one now, six to five. An absolute, you are 100% right about Eddie's power. Just an absolute rip on to the backcourt of the Red Hawks. Three in a row for Hovey. This ball is up, and it will be picked up by McClure, and there's an ace for the ace master of Bowling Green. Hovey, now the all-time leading in, during the rally scoring era, all-time in career service aces. And she just tallied another one. This ball from Hovey. Will she get two in a row? This ball is up low, fielded by a Red Hawk. It'll be picked up by Norris on the attack. Is Cermak. That one bounces off of Falcon and it will go. So tied game, no more. Miami retake the lead, seven to six. And Miami does a great job there of just turning a poor service receive into a quick attack on the outside. On the serve here will be Gentry Warwick, the junior hitter will be picked up by Lapinta. Set up Otten cross court to Vatswavchik. Did she tuck it in? No, she did not. Just a bit too much mustard on that one, you could say. That was pretty well placed in between a couple different Red Hawks, but just unable to find pay dirt there as we'll get second straight serve here for Warwick. This one is up, it's low, but it will be picked up by Lapinta. Otten sets up Vatswavchik over. It will be picked up by a Red Hawk. Bump set. Mercer will be blocked at the top. It'll go back to the Red Hawks side. Norris to Cermak, kept alive by Lapinta. Otten sets to Eddie. That one drops in the donut and will go Bowling Green's way. So back to one now, eight to seven. And this is what I mean by Miami needs to spread the ball out more. When they took that lead on BG, they were getting it to their middles. They were getting it to their opposite hitter a couple times. And then as soon as they stray away from that, it kept going back to the outside, back to the outside. Bowling Green's able to find a way to turn it into a points of their own. And we are gonna get a bit of a conversation going on here on both sides. Not sure if it was called in terms of a timeout. It looks like they're looking at something. Haven't been notified if that was a challenge or not. So we'll keep it here for a second because this is a lot of action early on in the matchup. You've got a team like Miami, one and 11 in the match, just very clearly hungry for a win, looking for their second Mac win. Their only Mac win of the year came in a five setter against the defeated Kent State. So they've officially announced that it's a Miami Red Hawk challenge. So we will take the break with them while they sort this out. You are listening to Falcon Volleyball here on WBGU 88.1, don't go anywhere. It's hard to keep track of all the health information that comes your way, but you still want to make the right decisions. Here's an easy one. Get tested for hepatitis C. It's a leading cause of liver cancer and often has no symptoms. People born from 1945 to 1965 are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. The good news is that now it can be cured. Talk with your doctor about getting a blood test for hepatitis C. Know for sure. A message from the CDC. BGSU graduate Jason Jackson from the Miami Heat here. Make sure to tune into the Zig Zone every Sunday at 4 p.m. on WBGU 88.1 FM, home of the Falcon Media Sports Network. 
You came across someone struggling with hunger. How would you recognize them? Would you notice an eight-year-old girl who's, who's not, not excited, excited for, for summer, summer break? Because she may not be having lunch again until September. Or a war veteran who's, who's having, having a hard, hard time, time landing, landing a job and getting back on his feet. I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. I, I am hunger, hunger in, in America. America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. The challenge will not go well for Dan Gwitt, who loses there. The point has been kept in the Falcon favor, so it'll be 8-7 to seven here at Millette, or Millette Hall in Oxford, Ohio. I'm Chaz McNeil with Andrew Smith. The serve by Sidney Hernandez picked up by McClure. Set up Norris on the attack is Hansen kept alive. Otten bump set to Tyler. Tyler sails that one a bit too far, 9-7. to seven. And that was something we saw a lot from Mia Tyler yesterday, and I believe that's why they have, we've seen a lot more of Eddie so far today. A little bit too strong in her attacks. A good chunk of the team's attack errors came off of Tyler yesterday. As the serve will go from Norris, picked up by Sidney Hernandez. Otten dumps it, but it will be kept alive. Vetter. Over, it will be a free play as Ellie Hansen just sends it over. Otten, soft touch into the donut is Andrews who just sent a spinner to no man's land, nine to eight. And that was a great play by Jessica Andrews. As a middle, you're not always, get, they're very, very quick sets. You're not always gonna get something you want. So very good job switching from an all out attack to just a tip off the block of the Miami defender. Lapinta will serve. This one will be picked up by McClure. Set up Norris on the attack is Cermak. Cermak will go off of Otten. And that will be ruled as a Miami scores. That one just kind of dribbled its way towards the media bench. And uh, Caroline Cermak is hitting with power right now. Just flying through the ball and green block. And she was really the primary engine yesterday as well as the serve will be picked up. Otten to Matil, Alexis Matil got up there with a just hammer shot to the back corner. And that's two slides in a row from the Bowling Green attack and I'm spot on with both of them. Matil runs the slide so well and just is getting, is getting more and more power with it as the season goes on. Amanda Otten will send this one out. It's a low one, but it will be kept alive by Cermak. On the attack is Vetter. That one goes off of Lapinta. Bump set Otten to Tyler. Off the hands, kept alive by McClure. Norris to Williams. That one goes off the block of Bowling Green and it falls outside. Miami remain up two, 11 to nine. And the BG block just doesn't look quite as strong right now. Matil and Hovey just not able to quite close it out. And as a result, Miami's just tooling them right now. This serve will be picked up by Tyler. Set, Lapinta to Tyler. That one bounces off of Cermak. Will it be kept alive? No! Great set there by Lapinta to Tyler, who just had a moon shot. And that's why you have Tyler in the game. She offers so much power with accuracy. But like you said, Chess, she kind of lost that a little bit last game. And that's the reason we're seeing more of Eddie. But when Tyler's on her game, she gets you consistent great kills. I mean, you could argue that in terms of her play, she's been better, if not right up next to Hovey with how good she's been, as this serve by Anders will go over to Gentry Warwick, who places it down for a Miami score. And a very well-placed tip. Just sat it right on the Bowling Green back line. Anna Vetter will take this one out. The 5'11 opposite. This serve is up, and it will be picked up by Anders. Otten sets to Vatswavchik. That one goes off the hands. Nobody there. And Bowling Green now draw back within one as both teams have reached double digits. It's 12 to 11. Both teams are playing very clean offense right now. However, the defense seems to be lagging a little bit on, on both sides of the ball. Pretty high scoring considering the game's only been going for 15 minutes as Alexis Matil will be dug out by McClure. Set up Norris on the attack is Cermak. Kept alive by Otten. Bump set from Anders to Eddie. Eddie soft touch, but it will be kept alive by Williams. 
Norris crosses to Cermak, and she places it right in the face of Anders, and a little bit too much to handle as Miami take the lead. So just back and forth. Both teams just siding out very well, just going back and forth. With Miami, like, we, like we've been saying, very hungry for this win, unwilling to let go of that two-point lead. A rare back row attack that looked really good. Ellie Hansen's serve will be picked up by Anders. Otten behind her head to Hovey. Lauren Hovey will be kept alive by Mercer. On the attack is Cermak. That's going to be bumped up by Anders. On the attack is Eddie. That one just laces its way in there and will score. So Bowling Green now back within one. Just, man, it's, it's like watching a pendulum almost. Just back and forth, both teams matching each other. Well, that's the... The poor part about volleyball is you managed to keep up that attack from Lauren Hovey that was also really good, but then Eddie just comes back with just as strong of an attack. And Lauren Hovey's serve will go as an ace. That one poorly fielded there by Mercer. And a Red Hawk tried to save it, but just was a little bit short. So that will go as ace number two for the junior. And the teams will end up tied here, 13 all. Hovey's second straight serve. This one is up and over. Picked out by Mercer. Set up Norris. On the attack is going to be Warwick. Kept alive Lapinta. And he sends it over. It'll be a free play. Norris to Cermak. Blocked at the top by the combination of Otten and Andrews. Bowling Green take their first lead of the day. And yes, Jessica Andrews was there. But Amanda Otten got up there to block that ball. Well done done by the Bowling Green setter. The serve by Hovey is up, and this one will be low. It'll be, be picked up by Mercer. On the attack is Cermak, just sending it over. Anders to Otten, to Andrews, blocked at the top. That one bounces off of Otten, and it will go Miami's way. We're tied up again at 14. And Mercer does a great job of learning from her mistakes in the last one. She allowed the service ace from Lauren Hovey. It just, ball just dropped in her a little bit, was able to just get under it, pick it up that time, and it turns into a Miami point. On the serve now will be Margot Lawson, the senior defensive specialist, dug out by Anders. Otten tries to dump it over, but he kept alive by Mercer. Eddie sets to Otten, back to Eddie, soft touch, and she just doesn't get it over. A little bit too soft on that touch as there are Red Hawks in waiting. I'm sure it would keep going, but it just drops in front of Vatswavchik. And we will get a timeout as we've reached the halfway point of set number one. You are listening to Falcon Volleyball here on WBGU 88.1. Don't go anywhere. I'm Fouad Reve, a home builder. Did you know there's a deadly, invisible radioactive gas that can seep into homes from underground? It's radon. Breathing radon can cause lung cancer. So protect your family. Talk to your builder. Tell them you want a healthier, safer, radon-resistant home. Learn more. Visit the EPA at epa.gov radon. That's epa.gov radon. This public service announcement is brought to you by the EPA, who does not endorse this particular builder or any other commercial enterprise. Hockey continues action against the Ferris State Bulldogs on Saturday, November 2nd. Catch Falcon Media Sports Network's Ben Korak and Nathan Burkett at 6.45 for pregame and 7 p.m. for puck drop on WBGU 88.1 FM. Welcome back here to Millette Hall here in Oxford, Ohio. I'm Chaz McNeil, joined by my broadcast partner, Andrew Smith, the Red Hawks putting on a bit of a stunner on the Falcons, up 15 to 14, as Margot Lawson for Miami will take out the serve. And you know, a bit of a surprise so far, just Miami really clicking offensively, getting a lot more production out of their hitters as Lawson will send this one low and into the net. That will go as a service error for the Red Hawks and it will also be tallied as the first Miami service error for Miami today. And that was a big issue yesterday. Both teams really struggling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Miami's finally turning their good serve receive into good attacks. 
Gracie Norris is looking the best she has all season as the Red Hawks setter. Sydney Hernandez returns with an error of her own on the serve. Miami retake the 16 to 15 lead. And now to serve will be Gracie Norris, the senior from Anderson, South Carolina. This ball from Norris is up, and it's a high one. Dug out by Hernandez, tough one. Otten tries to keep it alive, but it will not go. And that will be credited to Miami. So 17-15 now is 17 Norris goes again. Norris's serve is floated up, sent over, picked out by Hernandez. Set up Otten to Andrews, and she just punched that ball. That ball was sent, really just sailed it. Miami now take a three point lead, 18-15. And we are gonna get a challenge. The head coach, Daniela Tomic, is saying that there was a touch on that ball from Andrews. And I saw you kind of signaling a similar thing. I think thing. Coach Tomic saw what I saw. It looked like it hit off the blocker's hand. I think that's what Jessica Andrews was aiming for because that set was very high from Otten. So we're going to take the break with them while they sort this out. That's already two challenges so far today. So you are listening to Falcon Volleyball here on WBGU 88.1 FM. Don't touch those radio dials. song again for the hundredth time today here's that song again it's gonna be stuck in your head all day Yay! here's that song again it will make you cray cray you love your kids enough to watch that tv show a bajillion times Yay! love them enough to make sure they're in the right car seat for their age and size show them you love them keep them safe visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat brought to you by the national highway traffic safety administration and the ad council Welcome back here to Millette Hall in Oxford, Ohio. And we are we just got our official review. The point will stay, or it will go to the Falcons. There's a little bit of a juke move there by one of the officials. That point will be credited to Bowling Green. So now Miami, where it looked like they would be up three, now only up one as Bowling Green is credited. It's 17 to 16. And what a swing and a smart challenge by Coach Tomic. Lindsay LaPenta brings this one out. High serve will be picked out by McClure. Set up Norris. On the attack is Cermak. That one goes off the hands and outside. That goes to Miami. So now Miami finally get the 18 points that they wanted. And they are up to 18-16. Just a bit unlucky. Comes off the block. A little bit funny. And uh, Falcons not able to dig it out. Served by Caroline Cermak, dug out by Tyler. Otten back to Tyler, off the hands. Great dig by Norris, will McClure keep it alive? Free play opportunity as Vetter sends it over. Otten to Matil, Alexis Matil, slamming it down, 18 to 17 Miami lead. I'm very impressed that Miami was able to keep the first ball up. Great hustle from all of the Red Hawks to keep that play alive. And Alexis Matil with incredible power on her attack. Amanda Otten serve will be fielded there by Cermak. Set up Norris on the attack is Vetter. Vetter will be blocked by Matil, and it will go Bowling Green's way, 18 all. Alexis Matil stepping up right now, recognizing that her team needs a little bit of a boost and giving it to them. And speaking of a boost, Dan Gwitt looking for one as he calls his first time out of the day. We'll take it with him. You are listening to Falcon Volleyball here on WBGU 88.1 FM. We depend on our drinking water supply daily, but where does that water come from? Your water provider encourages you to get to know your local water source so together we can protect and preserve it. The investments we make as a community to protect our water source now ensure we have a sustainable drinking water supply for the future. Visit drinktap.org to learn more. This message is brought to you by the American Water Works Association and your local water provider. 
Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. What are you doing in my room? I'm your sense of adventure. It's been a long time since we've had an adventure in the forest. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. You're right. I should get out. Yeah, the forest is not that far away. Hey, Mom! Come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Come back here to Millette Hall in Oxford, Ohio. I'm Chaz McNeil, joined by Andrew Smith. We're all knotted up here at 18, and it's a little bit of a heart racer here for both teams who have honestly been doing very well statistically. Falcons, 12 kills compared to Miami's nine. Six errors from the Falcons on the attack versus Miami's three. Falcons have two aces compared to one, and both teams tied with three blocks. The serve by Otten will be dug out there by Cermak. On the attack is Williams, blocked by Hovey and Matil. And there goes 19 to 18 now. Bowling Green six away from closing out set number one. Alexis Matil with another block. Those are the ones you love to have as a middle blocker. Those ones that go straight back down. Second straight serve for Amanda Otten is a low one picked up by McClure and it will go down. Ace for Amanda Otten. And that was a great serve by Amanda Otten. Her serves, as well as Cindy Hernandez's, have gotten much better, much more consistent uh, as the season's gone along. That's 100% right, Andrew. Otten has really become a weapon in the serve game, as this one will also have trouble. Norris's attack will go off of La Pinta and go Miami's way, so 19 to 20. And Gracie Norris, some, uh, a setter who struggles a little bit with uh, getting her middles to the ball, is doing a very good job of it in the early goings of this game. Another great one to her middle there. We're going to see a libero switch as Anna McClure checks out for Ava Francis. And Francis on the serve just sails that one into the net. So now she will check out for McClure. Just a little bit of a miss hit. It's something you hate to see, but uh, it happens. You got to move past it. You got to move on to the next one. If you're getting put, put in as a pinch server, you just got to make the most of your moments and forget about the bad ones. Don't look now, Andrew, but in comes Vatswavchik, looking to maybe get a bit of a boost out of this offense as Anders sails her serve way too high. And now Miami joined the 20 club. It's 21-20 as the Falcons just need four, Miami need five. On the serve will be Anna Vetter. Vetter. Bringing this one up, it's low, it's taped, kept alive by Anders, great dig there, Otten to Wamchik off the block, I got my first dig! <laughs> I got and my... A, <laughs> more of a catch than a dig, but it was above your head, so I'll give you that one, Chaz. What a catch, and a, what a hit by Eddie. Nate, our board up in the studio, you gotta clip that right now. Got to put that on the highlight, highlight reel as Alexis Matil sends this one over. It will be kept alive by McClure. Norris on the attack is Cermak, kept alive by Anders. Otten to Andrews, putting it down. 23-20, Bowling Green need just two. This is the most energetic I've seen you on a broadcast yet, Chaz. And that's what I needed. Andrew, that's, that's the piece that has made my day. <laughs> Alexis Matil up and off the foot of Tate Mercer. Bowling Green get the ace. They need one for set number one. Mercer was not expecting that ball to drop in and it lands right on her foot. Alexis Matil, low, fielded by McClure. Norris dumps it to Otten who keeps it alive. Anders, bump set to Vatswavchik off of McClure. That one hits the scoreboard, but it will be kept alive by Norris. On the attack, he's Cermak, kept alive by Anders. Up goes Otten to Vatswavchik off of McClure, and that will go. Bowling Green takes set number one, 25-20. We'll be right back with set number two here on WBGU 88.1 FM. The way I describe it for people is, my dad shot himself and the bullet hit everyone in his life. It was a week before my 30th birthday and I had this impulse to call him, but I didn't because I thought I could call him later that week. 
65 Americans a day die by gun suicide. Safe gun storage saves lives. Learn more at infamilyfire.org. Brought to you by Brady and the Ad Council. The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. At Children International, we know that the journey to end poverty for good begins first with a child. It starts with their first checkup, lesson, opportunity, job. That journey takes commitment from people like you and me to end poverty for good. Learn more at children.org. Most of us like to be out in the sun. That's why sunscreen and other safety measures are key to protecting your skin from aging and cancer. The FDA recommends using a sunscreen with an SPF of 15 or higher. Also, look for broad spectrum on the label. That means both harmful ultraviolet A and B rays are blocked. Remember, SPF plus broad spectrum equal healthy fun in the sun. Visit www.fda.gov sunscreen for more information. A message from the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. BGSU men's basketball begins their second season under Todd Simon on the road against Southern Miss on Monday, November 4th at 7 p.m. Falcon Media Sports Network will have a preview and recap available on bgfalconmedia.com. Woo! Welcome back here to Millette Hall in Oxford, Ohio. I'm Chaz McNeil joined by Andrew Smith. And thank goodness for the break in between sets second to catch my breath after that electric finish both teams just really bouncing around trying to keep that last point and but bowling green and in, in the end getting a juice from editor Vatswavchik, who just closed things out i mean the falcons looked so good there four straight points did everything that they wanted to do they blocked they hit they spread the ball they received well and my, on Miami's side of things, you're kind of left stunned. That all happened so fast. And a couple of unlucky things happened for the Red Hawks, but I expect them to come out in this set and want it more, want it bad, and they're gonna come out with the same kind of fight. So the Falcons, they can take a sigh of relief, but they gotta get back out there and play now. That they indeed do, as we will see out on the floor for the Orange and Brown. It will be Mattel, Tyler, Andrews, Hubby, and Hernandez. Otten will check in. And, I mean, you look at the stats already. Vatswavchik having a huge game. Seven kills off of 15 total attempts. 333 hitting percentage. I mean, Alexis Mattel's got three kills on three attempts. I mean, she's always going to have that high yeah. hitting percentage. That's just something she does. It's in the identity. But another interesting stat, Amanda Otten. 13 assists, obviously. You expect that. She's already got four digs so far today. Yeah. She's leading the team in digs above Lindsay Lapinta, who has three. She's tied with Avery Andrews. So that'll be something to watch out for as Gracie Norris will take out this serve for the Red Hawks. Norris's serve is up high, kept alive by Tyler. Set up Otten to Hovey. Hovey off the top. It will go. Bowling Green strike first here in set number two, one nothing. And Lauren Hovey is just all reliable for the Falcons. If something else isn't working, they just turn to her. And to open this set, I couldn't think of a better way than a strong Lauren Hovey attack. And only a single blocker from the Red Hawks was I'm surprised by. They were blocking very well in that first set. Anders now up, sends this one up and over. That was out, but dug out by McClure, and that will go as an ace for Avery Anders. A little bit of a missed decision there by McClure and she brought it out and it was just a little bit too strong for her. Anders will now go two in a row. And Coach Tomek walked over and said, Avery, just calm down a little bit. Avery Anders just needs to calm down the serve and she does right there, puts it over beautifully. This one will be picked up by Warwick on the attack is Cermak, kept alive by Anders. Otten to Vatsawavchik off the hands. Set up Norris on the attack is Cermak. That one, it looked like it went off of Hubby but they ruled it in Falcon favor. I Listen, I know 
I know I'm not supposed to give my opinion. I thought I saw Hovey's hand move from that ball. I thought I saw the ball change direction as well, Chaz. And yes, we're going to get a challenge card from the head coach of the Red Hawks, of Dan Gwitt. And we will take the timeout with them. That's an, or what, I guess challenge is the right term, not timeout. But while they look at that, we'll take the break with them. You are listening to Falcon Volleyball here on WBGU 88.1 FM. Don't go anywhere. Wearing a safety belt is the easiest thing you can do to protect yourself, your family, and your friends. That is why the Ohio State Highway Patrol encourages all motorists to buckle up. This is Trooper Will Richardson of the Ohio State Highway Patrol's Bowling Green Post. Since 2017, 60% of people killed on Ohio roadways were not wearing a safety belt. It's simple. Safety belts save lives and reduce injuries and crashes. Remember, buckle up every trip, every time. Don't have time to tune into a BGSU sports broadcast? Falcon Media Sports Network will have you covered with live updates of home BGSU athletic events. To follow along, head over to at BG underscore FMSN on Twitter X. Is that a faucet running? That's not a faucet. That's a river rushing through the forest. Forest rivers provide over 100 million people with clean water to drink. What? I can't hear you because of the vacuum. That's not a vacuum. That's the trees in the forest cleaning up the air we breathe. I didn't know the trees were so amazing. Yep, and the forest gives us shade, trees to climb. That's awesome. Let's go explore some more. Visit the forest today and enjoy all it does just for you. To learn more about the forest and find one near you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. As far back as she can remember, Amy loved computers, how they worked, what they could do. They were a challenge. She wanted to learn as much as she could. So she harnessed her passion, and now she's a cybersecurity officer in the military. If you have a passion, a vision for your future in any field, todaysmilitary.com can be your path to a fulfilling career. You have a calling, we have an answer. Find your way at todaysmilitary.com. Looking for a BGSU Athletics talk radio show? Tune into the Zig Zone every Sunday at 4 p.m. where a panel of Falcon Media Sports Network members discuss the hottest BG sports topics only on WBGU 88.1 FM. Know about courage? I learned from my adoptive mom. She said sometimes you just gotta hold on and know we'll get through this. Mom, we are so high up. Hold my hand. <laughs> no, you hold my hand. Here we go! <laughs> Learn about adopting a teen from foster care. You can't imagine the reward. Visit AdoptUSKids.org to find out more. This message is brought to you by Adopt US Kids, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, and the Ad Council. Bit of a shocker here. The point stays with Bowling Green as the serve by Otten will be picked up by Norris. On the attack is Cermak blocked by Hovey. The secondary attack will be blocked by Matil, kept alive. Norris, back to Cermak, blocked again. Kept alive yet again by Norris. This time, Vetter gets a shot blocked again by Hovey. Otten to Vatsawavchik, blocked yet again this time by the Red Hawks. Norris behind her head by Lance. You have Anders, Vatsawavchik, free play. As Norris goes back to Vetter, off the block of Matil. That one bounces off of Lance. Bowling Green score. It's 4 0 here at Millette Hall in Oxford, Ohio. And that was great volleyball by both sides. You saw Coach Tomic get off the bench, very excited for her team. They played that beautifully, and so did the Red Hawks. But Bowling Green, so many blocks there. Oh my God. Anders serve gets taped here. Set up Norris. Vetter off the hands, kept alive by Anders. Great dig. Otten cross court to Vatswavchik. Soft touch kept alive by Vetter. Norris. Back to Cermak, into the net. That's going to be an attack error for Cermak. Bowling Green blanking Miami now 5-0. They have come out strong in this set. And that was a 
unbelievable dig by Avery Anders on that initial Miami attack. A little bit of a mind boggler too. First set for Miami, four errors. So far in this set, three. And that serve is gonna be straight into her teammate, Alexis Matil. That was a tough serve there from Anders, but both teammates seem to be smiling about it. You could hear a stunned silence as Miami get their first point of the set. To serve will be Caroline Cermak. This ball is up and it will be picked up by Anders, kept alive by Otten, Fatsuovchik. Somebody there picked up McClure to Cermak. Kept alive by Anders. Otten to Hovey. Off the block, it falls. Bowling Green retake their five-point lead. It's six to one. It feels like right now that Bowling Green is, is very strong right now, very in rhythm, and Miami is just trying to, try to stay alive, almost try to keep the ball in the air. And right now, that's all they can do. This Bowling Green attack looks great, and the blocking looks solid. They're doing everything they need to do. Matil serves it out. So tough series of events there for Alexis Mattel. She got hit with the ball on the serve, then she gets to serve and just sails that one. So it's gonna be two to six. Miami have yet to record a kill yet in this set. Ava Francis serves, set up Otten to Hovey, and Hovey, man, just windmill attack that just got put down. It's almost, you couldn't have placed that better if you dropped it from the scoreboard, it was so she well played. She snuck that right through the small opening in the Miami block and just powered it down. Hovey sends it up and over, picked out by Cermak. On the attack will be Vetter. Vetter dug out by Hovey. Set up Otten to Vatsawavchik. Vatsawavchik, long one to Cermak. Norris gives away to Williams. It'll be kept alive by Lapinta, but it will go out as that one goes on Miami's side, seven to three. That was a great up by Lapinta. It's, it's hard to even get a hand on a ball like that, so the fact she even got up in the air is unbelievable. To serve will be Anna Vetter. Today, Vetter has been not much from the service line, no aces or errors, but this one will go as neither as Anders picks it up to Otten Eddie. Off the hands, kept alive by Anders. Otten dumps it in the donut, but it will be kept alive by Vetter. Norris to Williams, off of Lapinta, similar to last play. This one kept alive by McClure. Norris on the attack will be Gentry Warwick, and that one falls. And minus a very tough back set to Saramac, Gracie Norris has been spot on for the Red Hawks. This is the best she's looked all season. And in response, this is the best the Miami attack has looked all season. Anna Vetter sends this one over. Otten sets to Andrews. Andrews spinning that one. There would have been nobody there, but she sent it into the desk of the, the media desk, if you will. Otten and Andrews just not quite on the same page right now. I think that attack will be so lethal if they can just Iron out a few little kinks, and then it's gonna be really special, I think. Better serve, picked up by Andrews. Vatsuovchik attack goes off the hands. McClure tries to keep it alive, but that will be three touches as Bowling Green are up three, eight to five. Out will check Vatsuovchik and Anders. In come Tyler and Hernandez. Coach Tomic having a word with Andrews. And Mia Tyler right now, I think, is checking into the game and wants to almost reestablish herself, wants to get her groove back after losing it in the last game. Hernandez picked up by McClure. Set up Norris, cross court, soft touch. Nobody there, that was Gentry Warwick. Just nice little finger roll that got the ball to fall. Miami's offense is not going away right now. They are just picking Bowling Green up. It looked like they were gonna slump. But now they're just finding little ways. It seems like the softer touch attacking Madonna is working. This attack will go off of Hansen, picked up by Lapinta. Otten bump set to Tyler. Tyler sails that one. Yet another attack error for Mia Tyler. And right now, Miami Miami serves are just able to keep 
Bowling Green off balance and force them to make mistakes. This serve will be picked up by LaPinta. Set up Otten to Tyler. Off the block, dug out by Otten. Bump set to Tyler. Soft touch, it'll be kept alive. Norris crosses over to Hansen. Otten tries to bobble it, and that will be sent over free play from Hovey. There's a little bit of confusion as Cermak dishes it over to LaPinta. Otten to Tyler, and Mia Tyler finally getting one to fall cross court on the line. Clean hit, that's what you want to see from your senior outside. That's the kind of thing that's going to get her back to that group. Miami, great job there, keeping that ball alive, getting it over the net, but Mia Tyler with a strong cross attack. That's what we're used to seeing from her. Served by LaPinta, that's going to be a tough one. Dug out there by Mercer, it will be an ace as Lindsay LaPinta keeps the ace party going. Bowling Green serves right now look very, very good. They're, they can be very hit or miss at times, but right now they look very strong. Six aces so far today for the Falcons as LaPinta will be dug out by Hansen. Set up Norris, soft touch Warwick. That will fall, nobody will be there. Otten and Hernandez both diving at it. That was just a wide open little drop shot, you could say, as to serve now will be Gentry Warwick. You know, as a player, you always want to hit the ball, hit the ball strong, and watch it bounce off the floor. But sometimes a light tip is just the answer to get around a block. Warwick serve low, dug out by LaPinta. Set up Otten. Mia Tyler off the block, dug out by Otten. Hovey sets to Tyler. That one goes off of Warwick. It'll be kept alive. Free play opportunity for the orange and brown. LaPinta to Otten to Tyler. That one bounces way off of McClure, and that will go Bowling Green's way, 11-8. Miami right now doing everything they can to keep the ball alive, but the relentless attacks from Bowen Green just cannot be stopped. Eventually that ball is going to get through and find the floor. Serve here for Amanda Otten. This one's low, dug out by McClure. It'll be kept alive by Norris. The attack from Reagan Lance. She looked good, but no, she actually tucked that one a bit outside, and Amanda Otten will get to serve again. Red Hawks calling for a touch there. I don't believe there was one, but Balls couldn't find the floor. Otten, it's up. It'll be picked up, tough one by Cermak. Hovey puts it back, that'll be kept alive. Cermak to Lance, free play opportunity. LaPinta set up Otten to Hovey. Lauren Hovey cross body into Red Hawk territory. Nobody there. 13 to 8. And a amazing receive right to Otten. And Otten doing something right now that she hasn't done all season so far, which is dupe the middle blocker. Miami middle blocker had no idea where she was going with that ball. Otten serve will be dug out by Hansen. Set up Norris. The attack by Lance. She gets a bit of revenge. That one bounces off a of Falcon. And it will go towards Miami. So now a four point lead for the Falcons as Gracie Norris now will go out on the serve. So far today, Gracie Norris has no errors, an ace, 14 assists in three days. This serve will be picked up by Hernandez, set up Otten on the attack is Hovey. She'll be blocked at the top, and she will be shut down by Cermak. Cermak goes up on a solo block and shuts down the best Bowling Green hitter. What a statement. The serve by Gracie Norris, picked up by Mia Tyler. Otten, bump sets, back to Tyler. Mia Tyler, she's got a little bit of a groove going here as she is now four for two, four kills on 12 total attempts, two errors. She's getting a little bit back and she's got a block. And she just, beautiful response by Tyler to that block by Cermak. Anders, this one's up, it's pushed, dug out by McClure, kept alive by Norris. The attack by Vetter will go off a hand, it'll be kept alive. Otten to Matil, that one bounces off a Red Hawk, kept alive! It'll be sent over, free play opportunity. Hovey to Otten, to Matil, that goes off the block. Bowling Green now back up five. 
Miami has done such a great job of getting the ball back over the net, but they just can't stop the second or the third or the fourth or the fifth. Bowling Green just keeps coming back and back with stronger and stronger attacks, and eventually the ball's just gonna get through. You just can't stop it. You can't keep it up for too long. With that said, we are going to take a quick break as it is a media timeout. Don't go anywhere. You are listening to Falcon Volleyball here on WBGU 88.1 FM. Don't you wish your life came with a warning app? Stop. That dog does not want to be petted. <laughs> a heads up before something bad happens. You should not send that text. Uh-oh. Life doesn't always give you time to change the outcome, but prediabetes does. With early diagnosis and a few healthy changes, you can reverse prediabetes and prevent or delay type 2 diabetes. To learn your risk, take the one-minute test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. BGSU Men's Soccer wraps up their regular season by heading west to battle Oregon State on Wednesday, November 6th at 10 p.m. Falcon Media Sports Network will have a preview and recap available on bgfalconmedia.com. Welcome back here to Millet Hall in Oxford, Ohio. I'm Chaz McNeil, joined by Andrew Smith as Avery Anders will serve for the Falcons. It's 15-10. Here in the second set, Falcons took the first set 25 to 20. This serve by Anders will be picked up by McClure. Set up Hansen to Cermak. That one goes off of Lapinta. Otten sets to Vatswavchik, whose soft touch will be received. Norris to Vetter. Vetter goes off the hands, and that will go towards Miami. Good solid attack there as that one bounces off of Anders. Great job by the Red Hawks, not backing down to the stronger Falcons team, instead rising to the challenge. The serve here from Cermak is a high one, dug out there by Anders. Otten, long set to Vatswavchik, and just a lot of power. We mentioned how much power Vatswavchik has. Put a little bit too much in that arm there. Sometimes, sometimes power comes at the cost of accuracy. Serve here by Cermak. This one lofted, picked up by Anders. Otten sets back to Vatswavchik off the block, kept alive by Cermak. Norris to Williams. Williams laces it in, but kept alive by Lapinta. Otten to Hovey. Lauren Hovey bounces that one off the foot of Anna McClure for a Falcon score. That might have been the best one, two, three as in receive, set, and hit by the Falcons I've seen all season. What an up by Lapento. what a set by Otten, what a kill by Hubby. Alexis Matil coming off of a service error sends it over. It's one hit, goes back to the Falcons. It'll be kept alive. Norris sets to Williams, blocked by Andrews and Hovey. The Canadian wall shutting that one down. With Hovey coming from Waterloo, Ontario, and Jessica Andrews coming from Golf, Ontario. Such a great name. As Alexis Matil sends this serve over. It's low, kept alive by McClure. Tough receive. Norris to Vetter. Vetter's attack is long. Bowling Green now within. Quick math here. They're within seven of closing out the set. It's 18 to 12. <laughs> Alexis Matil coming a, becoming a threat of her own behind the service line. Matil again. The serve is up. It's decent height picked up by McClure. Vetter keeping it alive. Cermak sends it over. Anders, it's going to be just an easy put back there by Chelsea Williams. The receive there by Anders, bit too much strength, and a just very simple one arm just tap down was all that Williams needed. And you know, Anders is a freshman. So she's still finding her footing on this team. She's going to make mistakes, but the important thing is her teammates continue to support her. Out checks Anna McClure. Ava Francis will serve. The sim almost exact same thing happens. Anders receives the serve, goes up and over, and a put back by the Red Hawks on near identical scores means Ava Francis goes back to the service line. 
This one's up, it's long, and it's out. 19 to 14, Bowling Green needs six. Avery Anders breathes a little sigh of relief because that ball was very close to being on the line. Serve is Lauren Hovey. Hovey's serve is up and low, and that will go as an ace off of Caroline Cermak. Tough reception. She bounced into McClure. They both tried to pick that one up. Neither was successful. Bowling Green need five. And that's Hovey's third service ace of the day. The serve by Hovey is up, and it'll be picked up by McClure. Set up Norris on the attack is Vetter. That one bounced off of a Falcon. LaPinta tried to save it. She was unable to. Just able to tool the block and uh, get it down on the line side of the court. LaPinta just unable to pick it up. And a Vetter to Anders. Tough receive again. Vatswavchik, free play. Williams to Norris to Cermak into the net. That's going to be an attack error off of a tough play by the Falcons. And Coach Tomich wants to have a conversation with her defensive specialist. Is out will check. Vatswavchik and Anders. And in come Hernandez and Tyler. And Amanda Otten, great hustle in that play. Sprinting over, getting to the ball, keeping it up so Eddie could just pop it over. And it results in a BG point. On the serve. Sydney Hernandez, this one's up, it's low, picked out by Cermak, Norris, cross body, and that will fall. That was a great play there by Gentry Warwick. As you mentioned, the slide, something that Bowling Green does very well, but that was a good slide by Miami. Yeah, the, slides, the slide is an attack that's used a lot in women's volleyball. You don't see it a lot in men's, I'm not really sure why, but Women's volleyball, the slide's a very efficient and strong attack. Ellie Hansen to serve, picked up by Hernandez. Tyler to Hovey, and that one was a bit too strong. Uh, you mentioned, Andrew, the Falcons are trying to get things going out of, uh, the, just out of system, out trying of to get system, things yeah. going like that. But the big issue is right now, the attack's a little bit too strong from Miami, as this serve will be put over by Otten. Set up. Cermak, that one tucks in, and we have seen a momentum, and Coach Tomich has seen enough. She will take a timeout, we'll take it with them. You are listening to Falcon Volleyball here on WBGU 88.1 FM. Don't go anywhere. Not too cool for me. And in return, I reciprocate that sentiment. I'll never be too cool for you. I was a man with a plan, but now I'm a dad with a decree, and you can't take that from me. Please let it be noted that I told my job they can dock my pay. Right now is just too important to take you to school every day. I want to be legendary for you. I want you to puff out your chest when you go to school the same way I do. I walk taller because of you, because I found everything to live for. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ed Council. If you came across someone struggling with hunger, how would you recognize them? Would you notice a 16-year-old boy, boy who got, got his first job, job, not for extra spending money, but to help feed his little sisters? Or a mother who's in between jobs and sometimes goes to bed hungry so her kids can have dinner? I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. I am hunger in America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. This is Henry Costco, and you are listening to 88.1 FM WBGU Bowling Green, home of the Falcon Media Sports Network. Welcome back here to Millette Hall in Oxford, Ohio. I'm Chaz McNeil, joined by my broadcast partner, Andrew Smith. Andrew, what have Miami done to really shrink this lead as we get towards the final portions of set number two? Well, they've just shown a lot of grit, determination, and hustle. They've been getting everything they can back over the net. And right now, they're just turning some of their service receives into kills, Chaz. The serve by Hansen, picked up by Otten. Mia Tyler's attack falls true. Falcons. Falcons need three to close out. Will we see Dan Gwitt make his call here? Not yet. He's doing a little coaching with Gentry Warwick as Lindsay LaPinta will take this ball out for the Orange and Brown. 
Lapinta's serve. Up, dug out by Hansen. Set up Norris to Cermak. Cermak off the block, kept alive. Norris goes back to Cermak. This will be blocked again. Kept alive by Hovey. Lapinta sends it over. It'll be kept alive by McClure. Norris and Gentry Warnick lays it down. That was great play by both sides. But the Red Hawks just a bit stronger. And the Red Hawks finally win one of those tough earned points. The Falcons have been getting pretty much all of those this set. Maybe the Red Hawks turn this set around, make it a close contest something, at the very least. Something that we saw yesterday was the Red Hawks closing in in that third set as Otten sets to Tyler. That's kept alive by Hansen. Norris, cross court to Cermak off the block, kept alive by Lapinta. Otten to Matil, kept alive by Otten. Lapinta to Tyler. Mia Tyler in the face of Ellie Hansen gets the score. Bowling Green need two. Miami would need six. And Amanda Otten, I said at the beginning of the game, I'm going to say it again now because she's doing it so well. She's having a much bigger presence at the net than she did at the start of the season. She's covering her own hitter. She's jumping for blocks. She's doing everything right. Low serve by Otten. It'll be bounced around. McClure sending it over. Free play for the Falcons. Lapenta to Otten. To Hovey off the block. Bowling Green need just one for set number two. And this is very similar to the first set with Miami kind of getting close, keeping things close, keeping things close. And now the Falcons are starting to pull away at the very end of the set. Let's see if they can close it out. Otten does her pregame ritual, spins the ball. It's up, it's over, it's low. Picked up by the Red Hawks on the attack. Will be kept alive by Lapinta. Hernandez, bump set to Tyler. Tyler's attack off of McClure, nobody there. Set two ends, Falcons up 25-19. We are one set away from a Falcon sweep. Don't go anywhere. You are listening to Falcon Volleyball on WBGU 88.1 FM. They are our love bugs and companions. They are our pets, our family, and they make life better. When we face unexpected challenges, so do our pets. That's why we're on a mission to support people and their pets. Whether donating a bag of kibble, sharing an Instagram post of a lost cat, or welcoming a foster pet into your home, every bit of kindness counts. Visit petsandpeopletogether.org to learn how to be a helper in your community. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. Looking for a BG Athletics discussion show? Check out The Swoop, where a rotating cast of Falcon Media Sports Network co-hosts talk everything BGSU Athletics. New episodes are available every Thursday at 6 p.m. on the BG Falcon Media YouTube channel. Hey guys, it's me, Isabella Gomez, filling in for Smokey Bear, because he's got more to say than just... Only you can prevent wildfires. Like, if you're outside enjoying a barbecue, don't let a hamburger distract you from fire safety. Make sure you aren't dumping your hot coals or ashes onto the ground, because that could start a wildfire. So take wildfire prevention seriously, and let's save the world one day at a time. Juntos con Smokey Bear, podemos hacerlo. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. BGSU football cornerback Jordan Oladokun is this week's Falcon Media Sports Network's Athlete of the Week thanks to his efforts against Toledo. Oladokun snagged his first two interceptions of the year in the rivalry win at the Glass Bowl. His first interception was returned 61 yards to the end zone for his second career pick six. To add to that, he also recorded three solo tackles and two passes defended. The six-foot senior was named a second-team All-Max selection last season after tallying four interceptions, 10 passes defended, one tackle for loss, and 30 total tackles. This has been Falcon Media Sports Network's Athlete of the Week. This is you over 30 years ago. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And this is your mom now. Are we there yet? Are we there yet?
Roles change without us noticing. That's why AARP gives you the information to provide even better care for your loved one. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Papa, why can't we telegraph while riding a horse? Son, there ain't no one to blame but Jeffro. He was riding old Betsy the Stallion, tip-tapping away at his telegraph, when blam! Ran right into the side of the saloon. Well, if Jeffro can't do it, neither should you. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Fiji Volleyball looks to sweep the battle of I-75 against Toledo on Tuesday, November 5th. Join Falcon Media Sports Network's Ben Korak and Chaz McNeil at 545 for pregame and 6 p.m. for first serve on WBGU 88.1 FM. How much time we got? Welcome back to... Millette Hall in Oxford, Ohio. I'm Chaz McNeil, joined by Andrew Smith. And wow, Bowling Green found a way to close out set number two. It's almost like deja vu. You look at this on paper. No, I, on paper, the score looks the same from the first two sets yesterday. Yeah. But in real life, this matchup has been white knuckle back and forth. Yeah. Very energetic. We mentioned out of system play a lot. Just both teams surviving these long, drawn out volleys, making their way through. And now, Bowling Green have the potential to close out a sweep. It would be their fifth sweep in six games. They were about a point short yesterday of making it six for six. So maybe a little bit of revenge for the Falcons as Amanda Otten will bring the serve out. On the floor for the Falcons is Sydney Hernandez, Amanda Otten, Lindsay LaPinta, Mia Tyler, Lauren Hovey, and Alexis Matil. And that, let, let's talk a bit about that second set for a second. 14 kills for the Falcons compared to 12 from Miami. Five errors, seven for Miami. And overall, one block compared to two from the Falcons, the serve by Otten is over and into the net. So Miami will score first blood there. Just as we were talking earlier about how consistent Otten has become with her serving, she puts one into the net. Typical caster's curse. Gentry Warwick kept alive by Sydney Hernandez. Up goes Otten to Alexis Matil, and Alexis Matil getting in on some more action. Mark that kill number five for Matil today. And you know, she's only got the five kills, but all of them have looked so clean, so good. Her and Amanda Otten are on the same page right now and are clicking so well. Avery Anders to serve for the Falcons. Anders' serve is low, dug out by McClure. Set up Norris on the attack is Lance, blocked at the top. Otten, back to Matil, and Matil, you said she's got five, she said how about six? as that will be another for the fifth year. I love that Matil manages to jump up and get a tip on a block, then bump it back up to Otten and then get the kill. Did almost everything on that point for the Falcons. Avery Anders, high serve, dug out by McClure. Norris to Cermak, kept alive by LaPinta. Otten sets to Hovey, Lauren Hovey, that goes off the block. And, oh, that won't be number two for me. That ball was so close to being dig number two. Couldn't get to it. Careening over to us, just flying over the seats in front and landing right next to us at the desk here. Heartbreaking. If you didn't know, Ben Korak, who is also a voice of Falcon Volleyball along with myself, is known for getting his digs. I got my first one. He's at six, apparently, but I don't trust him. The serve from Anders, up. It'll be bobbled around, put back by the Falcons and into the net for Miami, so Bowling Green score four to one so far. You don't believe Ben? You don't believe Ben has six digs? I, you know, Ben, 
great person. Phenomenal to talk to. And does a great job calling volleyball and hockey, but don't trust him as far as I can throw him as Avery Anders sends this serve up. It'll be picked up by McClure. Set up Norris on the attack, and we will get a whistle early mid-play as they will rule that. They're gonna rule that as the as Gracie Norris, the setter for Miami, bumped into the net while trying to set the ball that Received, got a little close to the net there, Chaz. You've got a better look than I did. I couldn't see a hand signal from the officials. Norris sets on the attack. His lands kept alive by Anders. Otten to Vatsuovchik. Vatsuovchik blocked at the top off of Hovey. That will go Miami's way, 5-2. to two. And Miami, again, fourth in the MAC in blocks. They are no slouch defensively. They get up there and they get their blocks despite being a shorter team. Great job by them today doing that. The serve from Norris is up and picked up by Anders. Up goes Otten to Hovey. Lauren Hovey, you couldn't script a better shot than that. That was clean and clear, six to two. That was a very crisp set and hit, like you said, Chaz, to Lauren Hovey. And the Miami block just didn't have the time to get there. Alexis Matil. Low one, dug out by McClure. That's going to be a tough one to save, but it will be done by Cermak. Kept alive is Matil. Otten to Andrews in the donut. Kept alive by Norris. McClure goes to Vetter. She'll be blocked by Fatswavchik and Andrews. And Bowling Green gets seven now. And Bowling Green, that's why they're the number one blocking team in the back. Like I said, Miami's four. They're very good at it too, but Bowling Green is the best for a reason. They have the height and they have the skill to do it day in and day out. Alexis Matil will be fielded there by Hansen. Up goes Norris on the attack is better. That bounces off a of Falcon and goes Miami's way. They cut the deficit to four, seven to three. And another back row attack from the Red Hawks. Did not see a lot of those coming out of them in the previous game, so they've done three or four today. On the serve is Caroline Cermak, and that serve is way outside. She sails that one. That will end up going as Cermak's first error of the day. Lauren Hovey to serve. So far today from the service line, Hovey has three aces and no errors. This one low, dug out by Cermak. Nobody there, Norris saves it. Kept alive by Williams. Lapinta digs that one out to Otten. Bump set to Vatswavchik who just has to send it over. Norris, the attack is Lance, and Lance puts too much strength on that ball. Nine to three. Expected a big game out of Lance coming into this one. She's playing quite a bit of middle blocker, which surprises me, but she's just been unable to find her spot on the floor so far. Hovey, yet again, sends this one over. It's going to be kept alive by Cermak. Norris to Williams off of Lapinta. Hovey, far set to Vatsuovchik. That goes off the block, kept alive by Norris. McClure is going to set to Vetter. She crosses it. Great dig there by Hovey. Vatsuovchik bumps it up. Free play as Anders has to just send it. Short set to Norris, to Williams off the block. Lapinta can't save that one. It will go in the way of the Red Hawks. And Lindsay LaPinta unable to track that one down. Great job by the Red Hawks with uh, their attacks there. But Lindsay LaPinta is going all out for the Falcons right now. She may not have a ton of digs, but they have all been super meaningful and great and well, very well done. Miami's serve will be taped but sent over by the Falcons. Norris sets to Williams off the block, and that block just a bit too outside as Miami have scored Two straight. It's nine to five. On the serve is Ava Francis. This one's low, kept alive by Anders. Otten, she dumps it, and an error. We know that she likes the offensive game, Andrew. You know that's my favorite play, but man, she got a little bit more height on that. And in a previous game, I told you, Chess, it's like taking a very deep three in basketball. Coaches love it when it works and hate it when it doesn't. Ava Francis says you can have this point back as she sails that serve into the net. It's going to be 6-10. to 10. 
and we are going to get a substitution. Out goes Anders and Botswavchik. In come Tyler and Hernandez. The serve by Hernandez. One bounce is all she needs. The ball's up and over, kept alive by McClure. Norris to Warwick, and Warwick drops it in the bucket. A very nice swing there. Just finding a spot in the back corner, and Lauren Hovey is unable to get there. Serve now will be Anna Vetter. Falcons hold the three point advantage, 10 to 7. Vetter serve. Lofts kept alive by Hernandez. Lapinta sets to Tyler, and Tyler just put too much strength on that one. Again, just a lot of overshoots from Tyler. She doesn't have that many errors. She's only got three today. All three, though, have just been. Absolute sales. Mm -hmm. The serve here by Vetter is low, kept alive by Lapinta. Otten to back to Lapinta. That's just a broken play. Setter dump by Norris is gonna go. And now, if you're Bowling Green, you gotta have some conversations. That was just an ugly play by the Falcons. Yeah, Falcons not looking too hot on that one there. You just gotta take a deep breath, calm down. Coach might be thinking about a timeout right now. The serve by Vetter, picked up by LaPenta. Otten sets behind her head to Andrews, and Andrews got that one in. Dan Gwitt having a conversation with the line judge, but I don't think he's gonna win that battle as it's 11 to nine. I think he's looking for that ball to have been out. I thought. Oh, it, it will be a challenge. Oh no, it's gonna be a substitution, my bad. I, it looked very close, but I, I I, don't see how he has an argument there. He's saying it was about a foot off. I think it was very much so on the line. It, it didn't look out to me, but he thinks otherwise. He might have a little bit of a better angle as Lapenta is dug out by McClure. Norris, soft touch to Warwick, kept alive by Hernandez. Otten sets to Tyler, who's blocked at the top, but it will go outside. Bowling Green retake a three-point lead, 12-9. And, and after the, the light tips from the last set, Hernandez learned her lesson. She got right behind the blocker and manages to dig that one out. And a great job by Mia Tyler, recognizing she can't put her usual power on it and tooling the block. That's a strong point for the orange and brown. It's been adjusting. The coaching staff for Bowling Green has been so good with that. As McClure fields Lapinta's serve, Otten dumps. It will be picked up by Norris. On the attack is Williams, kept alive by Hernandez. Matil to Tyler, soft touch, kept alive yet again by Williams. It's gonna be pushed over by Cermak, diving attempt. Otten to Matil, and Matil will put it away. Alexis Matil gives her team a four point lead. What a diving dig by Sydney Hernandez, showing up big on the defensive end for the Falcons. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better dig there as we are going to get a timeout called. We'll take it with them. You are listening to Falcon Volleyball here on WBGU 88.1 FM. Don't go anywhere. Women Heart is in a race to save lives. Heart disease is the number one killer of women. It's 80% preventable if you know the facts. Millions of women are living with or at risk of heart disease. Get educated. See your doctor. Know the facts. To win this race, we all have to do it together. Our hearts beat as one. To learn more, visit womenheart.org. Adopt US Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager learning the lingo. Jelly. Jelly adjective. Jelly is a shorter, better way to say jealous. As in, Chloe, I am like so jelly of your unicorn phone case. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Millet Arena or Millette Hall, excuse me, here in Oxford, Ohio. I'm Chaz McNeil, joined by Andrew Smith. And to the far right of us is Artie Abrego, who will have the recap on bgfalconmedia.com shortly following this game as the Falcons hold a four-point advantage against the Miami Redhawks here in set number three after taking the first two. Lindsay LaPinta serve will be picked up by Norris. Over to Warwick, and Warwick manages 
to just pinpoint that ball and and just tucks it in 13 to 10. You know, as a middle, I can tell you from experience, coaches tell you repeatedly, aim for the corners, aim for the corners, aim for the corners. So you go right down Main Street, you're going to get blocked, especially with someone like Matil or Jessica Andrews there. The serve will go off of Hanson, kept alive. Otten sets to Tyler. Mia Tyler low into the net, but they're, they're going to rule that Miami's way. The Falcons thought it went off a fingertip, but Miami will have their way. It's 11 to 13, swinging momentum goes Momentum starts swinging, excuse me, Miami's way as Hansen sends this one over. Picked up by Tyler. Otten sets to Matil. Alexis Matil, that one going off of Tate Mercer. And a save from the cameraman is Gracie Norris as that was about to hit the camera professional. Fort this Red Hawks team showing a lot of hustle on every single play. They want to get their second win badly. Serve by Otten is low, dug out there by Hansen. Norris sets to Cermak. That one goes off a hand and goes the way of the Red Hawks. So it's 12 to 14 now as out will check Mercer and in will come Reagan Lance. That was Anna McClure checking out as on the serve will be Gentry Warwick and she sails that serve. Bowling Green now 10 away from the sweep. Warwick checks out, in comes McClure. Out will go Hernandez and Tyler for Vatswavchik and Anders. Anders to serve. Avery Anders, sister of Darren Anders, who played football for Bowling Green for four years, graduated last year. This serve picked up by McClure, set up Norris. On the attack is Cermak. It goes off the block and it will go Miami's way. 13-15. Now this is a lot, uh, this is very similar to what we saw yesterday where Falcons go out to a pretty sizable lead in the third, Miami shrink it, and then in the last second the Red Hawks took the set to stretch it to four. Will the same happen today? We do not know as the serve by Gracie Norris will be picked up. Otten sets behind her head to Hovey, and Lauren Hovey drops it in the bucket in the face of Gracie Norris. 16-13. And I talked about it a little bit earlier. Amanda Otten is keeping the middle blockers guessing, something she hasn't done all season. At the beginning of the season, I said she could be a little predictable. She has eliminated that predictability. The serve by Mattel is going to be a tough one to save by McClure, as that will be saved by Norris. Up goes Otten to Hovey, soft touch in the donut, saved by Norris. Lance sets to Vetter. Vetter saved by Hovey. Up goes Andrews to Vatswavchik. That's a hard shot, but it will be kept alive. McClure sets back to Vetter. That attack will be tucked just inside. 16-14, Bowling Green lead. And we are going to get a conversation between the down ref and the Miami head coach, Dan Gwitt. I think Gwitt was concerned that a, a Bowling Green player or a Miami player, one of the two, had gone underneath the net on a block, I believe, a Bowling Green player, which is a concern for safety. And it, it could be called if it affects the play, but I don't think it did there. And Miami got the point anyway, so. To serve for the Red Hawks is Caroline Cermak. Dan Gwitt still getting some clarification, but now Cermak will get the go ahead. The serve from the senior is up and picked up by Anders. Otten, she sets to Hovey. Lauren Hovey, perfectly placed shot yet again. Bowling Green now need just eight to close out the sweep. And Amanda Otten, that, that set to Lauren Hovey has gotten better and better and better and better. They look very familiar with each other now as opposed to at the start of the season. Hovey, up and over, picked up by Norris. To Williams, should be blocked at the top, and that will rattle inside of Falcon territory. So Miami doing a good job of sticking in between two. And, you know, for a team that has a one win in MAC play record, they honestly do a good job of sticking around teams. Five sets against Buffalo, 
about a month ago as the serve by Ava Francis will be picked up. Otten tries to dump, kept alive by Vetter. Norris to Williams, the attack right in the face of Lindsay Lapinta. Now it's just a one point difference with the Falcons in the driver's seat. This Miami team is showing some fight. They want this second win bad. It weighs on you to only have one win in the column. Ava Francis will be dug out by Anders. Otten to Wawczyk off the block and the Falcons will break their scoring drought. They score 18 to 16. And I think that was a great block there by the Red Hawks. They were just a little bit late, didn't quite get the hands turned in. And Wawczyk is able to easily tool the block and get that ball to go outside. Sydney Hernandez takes this ball out for the orange and brown. The, the serving, uh, Lord Hovey's the serving maestro, but Hernandez has been no slouch as this serve will be dug out by McClure. The setup, Norris to Williams off the block, and it will go Miami's way. Back to one now, 18-17. And Coach Tomek is coming over to tell Jessica Andrews, just, just make sure to, to press a little bit more on that one, make sure you're closing the block all the way. That ball just seemed to sneak through and a good swing by Miami. On the serve, it's Vetter picked up. Otten to Andrews and another service error, or another attack error, excuse me, for Andrews. And for Jessica Andrews, that will go as her fourth error and a timeout called by the Falcons as we're all tied up. We'll take it with them. You are listening to Falcon Volleyball here on WBGU 88.1 FM. Eating, working, living pain-free. These are a few of the things many of us take for granted. But for many adults with disabilities who are elderly or have serious medical issues, dental care is simply unaffordable. Dental Lifeline Network is looking for dentists who can change this. DLN is asking dentists and their teams to volunteer to just see one of the many patients in need. You can literally change a life. Visit willyouseeone.org to help change one life in your community today. BGSU women's basketball season turns anew as they are set to square off against Southern Mississippi on Monday, November 4th. Falcon Media Sports Network's Lucas Kleimeyer and Caden Knapp will have the call on WBGU 88.1 FM beginning at 645. Welcome back here to Millette Hall in Oxford, Ohio. I'm Chaz McNeil, yet again joined by Andrew Smith. And the third set in this series has been as advertised, 18 all, late in set number three yesterday. The Red Hawks managed to come all the way back in set three and then nearly took set number four to fourth, a fifth yesterday. The Red Hawks giving the Falcons everything they can handle as Vetter serve will be picked up by LaPinta. Otten bump sets to Tyler. Mia Tyler goes off of McClure back to herself and that will be a put back but kept alive. Williams to Norris. Right back to Williams, off the block, kept alive by Hernandez. Up goes Otten, back to Tyler. Tyler puts it away off of Cermak. Bowling Green needs six. And Mia Tyler, three swings on that play alone. And finally manages to get one through. Looking for the Falcons to close out this set strong as they had in the previous two. LaPinta. Her serve is up. It will be picked up by McClure near the net. Norris back to McClure. It's going to be kept alive by LaPinta. Otten to Tyler. Mia Tyler, that goes off of McClure. Saved by LaPinta. Otten sets back to Tyler. That goes off the block. Will it be kept alive? Yes, Norris will save it. On the attack is Cermak, and she tucked it in. What an athletic play there by Caroline Cermak. Cermak has looked good. All game chess, very powerful hits and very accurate too. She is clearly the best hitter that this Red Hawks team has and she's towing it both in the front row and now in the back row. Ellie Hansen to serve for the Red Hawks. Otten sets to Matil and Alexis Matil. Is she automatic? <laughs> I mean, at this point you almost have to ask, 
hitting percentage for Alexis Mattel. Yeah, it's just a cool, smooth nine kills on 11 attempts. 818 hitting percentage for the middle blocker. And we are going to get a shoe tying break for Mia Tyler. Make sure to double knot them. I mean, the rabbit goes through the hole, <laughs> I believe. Yeah, no, Alexis Matil should just be automatic Matil because pretty much everything gets down for her. Up goes Otten. She will be picked up and aced by Ellie Hansen as that was a mishandled serve. Nobody there. Bowling Green need four for the sweep. It's sadly that's not an ace. The Red Hawks got a second touch in there. Oh, my And so it's goodness. not going to go as an ace, but it basically was one. It looked just like it an ace. It will be one in our hearts. And that's another mishandled serve, but McClure saves it. Up goes Otten to Matil. Automatic Alexis Matil. 22-19. Bowling Green need three. What a swing from Alexis Matil. She's getting more power on her hits as the game goes on. And that will be a timeout for the Red Hawks. We'll take it with them. You are listening to Falcon Volleyball here on WBGU 88.1 FM. Don't go anywhere. Getting a flu shot helps us stay healthy so we don't miss out on what matters. Like that family movie night your daughter can't live without. <coughs> Yeah, can't do that. Every year, millions of people in the U.S. get the flu. Especially now, no one has time to miss out on moments that matter. So get your flu shot. Find out more at GetMyFluShot.org. Brought to you by the AMA, CDC, and the Ad Council. Welcome back here to Millette Hall here in Oxford, Ohio. As always, Chaz McNeil joined by Andrew Smith. Andrew, Falcons are in clutch time, 22 to 19. They just need three points to close out the sweep and end this game before a full 24 hours has passed since the last game ended up kicking off. Yeah, the Falcons have a chance to close out the third set here as they did in sets one and set two. A very similar score of 22 to 19. But the Falcons go on a little bit of a run here, I believe a three point run as they look to find themselves another sweep. The fifth one in six games. And if you even add that up a little bit more, that there that's that would be five sweeps, so 15 sets, on top of one missed set. So out of one for 18 in sets is pretty amazing. Serve, picked up by Norris. On the attack is Warwick, kept alive. Otten sets to Hovey, and Lauren Hovey will be denied. Lauren Hovey has had a couple moments this game where she's just been unable to get around that Miami block. It's a very good block, and they're obviously, Lauren Hovey's the best hitter. Miami's focusing all the attention they can on her. The serve by Otten will be picked up by McClure. Set up Norris on the attack is Cermak. She'll be blocked by Matil and Hovey. To one point remaining for the Falcons to sweep. And Miami, as this set has gone on, has looked again and again to their outside hitters, and it's become predictable. And Lauren Hovey and Alexis Matil predicted it correctly and shut that one down. Amanda Otten serve, picked up by McClure, set up Norris on the attack. It will be kept alive by Anders. Just at the top, Otten to Hovey, kept alive by Tyler. Otten sends it over, it will score! Amanda Otten has closed out the match, 25-19. We'll be right back with associate head coach Alex Del Piombo to talk about this game. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Falcon Volleyball here on WBGU 88.1 FM. When it comes to making plans, you are the best. What about those round trips, which are perfect on your way there and perfect on your way back? Or those meetings with friends, surprise parties, camps, birthdays. The same way you plan for the important moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alerts. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. Get started at ready.gov plan. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council.
Freshman forward Maxwell Martin scored his first collegiate goal in the first game between the Falcon hockey team and the Ohio State Buckeyes on Friday, October 25th. Martin scored on a backhand shot from the left side of the goaltender off a pass from Ben Duran. The goal was the only time BG beat a Buckeye goaltender in the two-game series. Martin previously played two years for the Wisconsin Windigo of the NAHL, his final year finishing third in the league in assists, first in goals and points, and being named All-League First Team Forward of the Year and MVP of the NAHL. Heading into the series against Ferris State, Martin has an assist to pair with the goal, nine shots, and a plus-two rating. This has been 60 Seconds in Falcon Athletics. When you're high, you feel different. You think different, you talk different, you draw different, you listen to music different, but you probably knew that. Problem is, you also drive different, and not in a good way. That's why driving high is illegal everywhere. So if you're high, just don't drive. Make a plan to get a sober ride. Because if you feel different, you drive different. Brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. BGSU football senior tight end and team captain Levi Gazarek recorded his first collegiate touchdown reception on a two-yard pass from Connor Bazelak in the second quarter of the Falcons' 41-26 victory in the Battle of I-75 on October 26th. The touchdown grab was his first since the 2019 season when he was a senior at North Baltimore High School, where he had 158 yards and a receiving touchdown to go with 1,105 rushing yards, 1,110 passing yards, and 24 total touchdowns that season. Gazarek, who also pitches for the BGSU BGSU baseball team is in the final year of eligibility. He's a two-time team captain and has played in every football game since 2021, starting all but 13 in the four-season span. This has been 60 Seconds in Falcon Athletics. Welcome back here to Millette Hall in Oxford, Ohio. I'm Chaz McNeil joined by associate head coach Alex Del Piombo. Alex, thanks for joining us today. Of course. So, coach, walk us through just what happened in this matchup. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought that um, our team did a good job of getting better today. Uh, our, our defense wasn't quite where we wanted to be to start, and I thought that as the match went on, we improved and improved. Um, but our offense really shined. We had some some bangers, some individual performances, but I also thought it was a big team win. Eddie coming in and doing her job. Every set, someone else stepped up for us, and it was um, – it was a good match. So you mentioned the individual performances, and let's talk about the elephant in the room. Alexis Mattel yeah. <laughs> just aut uh, said it on the broadcast, automatic. She leads the Mac in hitting percentage right now, yeah. and that's only going to go up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. Alexis, it's not surprising, but I'm so happy for her. She comes in, and she has since a freshman year. She's come in and worked her butt off every single day. Every day she brings fire. She might be the most consistent player I've ever coached. Um, and so it's really cool to see Alexis's uh, hard work pay off for her. And she's not thinking about her. She's thinking about how do I help the team? How do I help us accomplish our mission? And it's really cool that the stats show that. Yesterday, Coach, don't want to dwell on the past, but that was – Going, going into fourth set, mm -hmm. that third set was kind of the hotly contested one. Sure. Today, similar thing. You guys looked pretty strong for the first two, and then mm -hmm. in the third, how big was it to close out? Yeah, well, you know, we have a quick turnaround. We play Tuesday. We always want to, you know, winning in three is a lot better for the body, but um, – I, I, a lot of it has to do with are we playing at our standard and I think that recently we've done a really good job after 20 and I thought that that's what happened tonight we at 2020 we kind of cranked it and good things happened for us coach it's rivalry time now mm -hmm. Tuesday the Rockets come to the Stroh Center last meeting that was the massive performance the reverse sweep mm -hmm. at Savage Arena yeah how big is this game yeah I, everybody loves playing T-Sun you know it's it we always get hyped for it but again it's about um us being at our standard, are we getting better? Are we getting better as a team? Are we getting better um, as a program? And Toledo always brings their best against us, which we love. It's always a fun environment. And we're excited to be at Stroh in front of our fans and Orange Wave and um, get after it. It's always a great time. All right, Coach, we look forward to seeing that. Thank you so much. Thank you. With that, we're going to head to a short post game where Andrew Smith will join me. Stay tuned. You are listening to Falcon Volleyball here on uh, WBGU 88.1.
Every year, millions of Americans use opioids to manage pain. And reliance on opioids has led to the worst drug crisis in American history. That's why the CDC recommends safer alternatives like physical therapy to manage pain. Physical therapists treat pain through movement, hands-on care, and patient education. No warning labels required. When it comes to your health, you have a choice. Choose physical therapy. Visit MoveForwardPT.com to find a physical therapist in your area. BGSU Cross Country heads to Muncie, Indiana to compete for a MAC title on Saturday, November 2nd. Falcon Media Sports Network will have recaps of both the men's and women's events on bgfalconmedia.com. Welcome back here to Millet Hall in Oxford, Ohio. I'm Chaz McNeil, joined by Andrew Smith. Andrew, this was th the opportunity for Bowling Green. They have made it clear that despite the fact that the end of their schedule is a little bit softer than you like to say, <laughs> you got a Kent State team that hasn't won in the MAC, this Miami team that only has one MAC win, an Ohio team that sits towards the bottom of the MAC, mm -hmm. they still will not overlook opponents. That's the key to winning these games is you've got to play every team like it's the MAC championship. And yesterday we saw them kind of fall back a little bit. They let up something that we haven't seen since that loss to Central Michigan. Mm -hmm. Today, they did not let up at all. The most they gave up was 20 points. The other two sets, both 19. How big was this performance? I think this is a huge performance because this is – this was very clean volleyball from BG throughout. And you went up against a team that, although they only have one win in the column, that doesn't reflect the kind of fight and the kind of talent that's on that's on the lineup. So the Falcons came into this matchup, this series, and they just you know, they wanted to get these wins. Uh, obviously, they wanted to get them quickly and easily, but you can't do that. It's conference matchups. It's conference play. It's tough, tough games, and there's no games off. And... I feel like the Falcons have taken that to heart. They they want to not only win against these types of opponents, but they want to prove that they're the best team in the MAC by sweeping these opponents. Now, uh, the fate of the Falcons is not really in their own hands right now. They have to worry about what's happening with Central Michigan. Don't mm -hmm. have the score on me right now. They are taking on, uh, I believe, off the top of my head, an Ohio team <laughs> that the yes. Falcons play next week. And that's going to be a big moment for them can they hope a central michigan slip up puts them at the top but they can't look ahead i can't imagine a central michigan slip up against ohio i'm going to be totally honest this ohio team has um stuck with the toughest opponents in the mac of buffalo of toledo of central michigan of eastern michigan um really really well but they just haven't been able to close out games. They went up 2-0 against Central Michigan yesterday, and Central Michigan came back and reverse swept them. So I can't imagine that that momentum is going to die for Central Michigan enough for Ohio to win a game against them. So with that said, I think that wraps us up for this post game. Falcons take on the Rockets this upcoming Tuesday. Ben Korak and I will have that call right here on this radio station, 88.1 WBGU. With that said, a couple thank yous. So first off, I want to say thank you to my broadcast partner, Andrew Smith. Andrew, as always, you have the best volleyball knowledge, I could say, out of anybody in this organization. I want to say thank you to somebody. One seat over to me, Artie Abrego, who went on the nearly three-hour trip with us and really is going to be the guy who will write our recap for this game that you can check up on bgfalconmedia.com. I want to say thank you to Lucas Kleinmeier and Tyler Cavalis, who run Falcon Media Sports Network, who really give us these opportunities. Derek Vandermeer, who has really accepted student media into athletics and let us have such a good partnership. The volleyball team in general, they are always so kind. And to Nate Hinners, who is in the Cooling Center Studios, pressing all the buttons, keeping us on air. Thank you, Nate. You are the best. But with that said, I'm going to send you into your good night. Have a phenomenal rest of your day. And don't forget, we are not Rockets fans for the next couple of days before the rivalry game on Tuesday. With that said, have a great night. See you later.
This broadcast has been a Falcon Media Sports Network production. For more BGSU sports news and updates, follow Falcon Media Sports Network on Twitter X at BG underscore FMSN, BG Falcon Media on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and head over to BGFalconMedia.com. <laughs>